Hey YouTube, Audi Olympian here, back with another video coming to you from the battleground of the Coliseum. Uh, today's video, we're going to be talking about home theater and the beginning stages of home theater. So this video is going to be mostly for beginners, or actually I wouldn't even say beginner, I would say starters. Often I find in a lot of forums, uh, people are getting into home theater and they have a lot of questions in the beginning. So this video here, we're going to be talking about all this stuff for home theater if you want to become that cinephile so sit back hit that like button and we'll get started with the video here so i got the idea to start this video series called home theater for starters uh, because on a lot of forums and a lot of facebook pages and even uh, comments that i get on my channel or from our subscribers there's a lot of beginner home theater enthusiasts out there or i should even say starters um, people that are just just now getting into it and when you make that transition over either from car audio or home audio into home theater there's always a lot of questions right away in the beginning and years ago for all of us that have been involved in home theater for quite some time there weren't a whole lot of resources um, back then mostly magazines and then your local shop that you purchase things from or even your big box stores Best Buy Circuit City um, which are, you know, Circuit City is gone today. So a lot of us had to just do trial and error and figure things out, play with a lot of equipment. Today, it's almost the exact opposite of that, where there's so much information out there. Now, it can be almost overwhelming. So what I'd like to do in this video series here is clear all that clutter out for you, break it down into bite-sized pieces so that you can understand it very easily and you can start enjoying your home cinema theater quality experience as soon as you can. Ready? Let's get started. Okay, so let's answer the question first. What is home theater or home entertainment? Basically what it is, is you creating the same environment that you would have when you go and see a movie at the movie theater, but you have it in your home, right? Very, very basic. Um, definition there so number one is going to be speakers you need some speakers to give you the sound that's really what it is there um, talking about the creating the home theater environment or atmosphere is it's going to be the immersive sound so in starting your basic setup for home theater center channel your front mains now I'm using towers here for this um, example and I have these on stands which you normally probably wouldn't put them up this high. Um, and you can easily use bookshelf speakers for your front mains, they don't have to be towers. And on another video we'll even talk about satellite systems and what those are and what those look like. But for right now we're just talking about your basic black square box speaker system for yourself. So you got your front mains right here. Um, again, I use towers, but you could easily use bookshelf speakers. And then you have your rear surround speakers here, or surround speakers. And I say rear because they usually go to the back behind you or, or a little bit behind you on the side of you. You can decide wherever you put them. Uh, you can decide wherever you want to put those at. There are many diagrams that you can go and look up on, online to see uh, how to place speakers for your setup there. So then you have your surround speakers here, center channel, front main. Down here, you have your powered subwoofer, which is what's going to give you the big boom and all the, the noise shaking your room for you. Subwoofer is very, very key for a good home, uh, home entertainment system. Next, your devices that disperse the sound for you and give you the visual. So DVD player, this here is uh, one of the first versions of the Ultra HD Blu-ray player, so 4K player. This is the Samsung, the first uh, Samsung one. And then you have your receiver down here, which is a Denon receiver that I have. I think the model is, uh, I'm looking for it, it is the AVR S700W. Pretty decent receiver there. Has a lot of features in that. We'll sh I'll show the back here in a second so you can get an idea of what uh, all comes with that. These two are gonna give you your video and audio dispersion for your home entertainment. Now, obviously, you're also gonna need either a TV monitor or a 
projector with a projector screen. That's gonna be uh, for a whole nother video. That'll be something later on. But for basics, just need your TV or uh, monitor. Now, before we go on, I did wanna answer a question. You might be thinking in, uh, to yourself in your head, can I still have home theater if I don't have five speakers? Good answer to that, yes you can. There are different setups, which is known as a 3.1 setup, which means you have your center channel and then your front mains. And then you could also still just have a stereo setup with just your front mains. Now, you're, you won't have the surround sound without the other speakers, but that's okay. You still can get the home theater experience just as well with a two channel system or a three channel system. Now, you do not always have to have a subwoofer with that as well. Depending on what you have for your front, like these here are towers, the difference between a tower and a bookshelf, one of the main difference, I mean, there's a lot of them, but for home theater, is a tower is automatically gonna give you a little bit more low end, a little bit more bass out of the sound, out of the speaker here, just because of the size of the cabinet, and usually they have more drivers uh, than a, your average bookshelf speaker. So, you don't need to have five channel, uh, five speakers to have a home theater, a good home theater setup. However, you won't have the surround sound without the other speakers, but it'll still sound just as good for you. I do run uh, a stereo system, a stereo home theater system in my bedroom, just because I didn't want to have a whole lot of speakers all around my bedroom. And I do have two other home theaters in my house. So I didn't necessarily, necessarily need extra speakers in my bedroom. My wife appreciates that. So now, once you have all your components, how do you hook everything up? So how does it work? So one, you're gonna need an HDMI cable, which actually stands for High Definition Multimedia Interface. Uh, there's another description out there for it too, but that's not that important. You're gonna take this and plug it in from your DVD player into your receiver. The DVD player then is gonna pass the video and audio signal through the cable to your receiver. Then, you take your speaker cables, which I have, this is kind of a little bit of a fancier speaker cable here. We're gonna talk about speaker cables um, and connectors in another video for you. But for your basic one here, you have your left and right speaker cable for your hot and your um, negative, your positive and negative sound there. And just, just so that you know, you can go to any hardware store and use your basic 16 gauge uh, speaker cable to transfer all your sound. Again, we're keeping everything very, very beginner and starter basic for those that are just getting into home theater right now. So you would take one end of this here, plugs into your receiver. The other end goes out to your speakers. And you just match the color for the color. Red goes to red and black goes into the black side and then the receiver will transfer the sound over to your speakers. So here's a quick setup. So I'm gonna take my HDMI cable. You see there's two inputs right here, or outputs I should say, on this DVD player. I wanna use the main out right here. And what that is here is that's gonna give me the audio and the video output from the DVD player. The sub one here, you can see it says audio only. Now this um, DVD player was designed, like I said, it was one of the first ones uh, for uh, Ultra HD, which is 4K player. Not all the receivers or processors back then uh, could transfer or take the 4K video signal. So you were able to take it a, a player like this, use two cables, one for your video and then one for your audio. That way you could still get your surround sound and your 4K uh, video image at the same time. Not all um, HD players uh, come like this. So that's just a quick tip there. Now I'm gonna take my HDMI cable right here. I'm gonna plug in from my main out. And I'm going to take and plug in over here on the receiver. Get a little closer here. So now that I plug that into my DVD player, I'm going to take my cable here 
and I'm going to plug into right here where it says DVD Blu-ray player. Now, do I have to plug into that input here? Not necessarily. It'll work on all of these. But the way a lot of the receivers are designed, they have processors and buffers in there that'll specifically give transfer better signals on each one of these. So, um, and it may have different processing for each one. So as you can see on my input four and input five here, it's got the 4K symbol here. I'm sure if you can see that, let me get a little closer there. And those are gonna be the ones that actually I would take this Ultra HD player and plug into there to pass the 4K uh, signal. But in the event, if you don't have that and you're not using HD players, you could still just be using a regular um, DVD player, which is totally fine. You would plug it into one of the HDMI um, inputs there. But for the purpose of this video, I will unplug it here and I'm going to use it in my 4K Blu-ray player input there. Now, in order for me to get my video signal, I'm going to need another HDMI cable to go from my monitor out and then that HDMI cable would go from here into my TV. And let's take a look at that. So here's the back of my TV. Again, just using something very simple and basic. Um, it's actually a monitor, Samsung, old Samsung monitor. But I would take one end of another HDMI cable, plug it into my monitor out, and then that end is gonna go into my HDMI input on my TV. And then from there you would select, you would have to go into your menu and select which HDMI input you, you just plugged into. So on this one here, you probably can't see it very well, but this is an HDMI 2, input 2, because I think, like a lot of TVs, yep, there's, an, there's always one here on the side as well, which is either your 1 or your 3. Most TVs now come with at least 3 um, HDMI inputs to them. If you're using an older TV, it might only have one, but it still works. If it only has one, then you would go into your settings and select HDMI. If it has more than one, you go into your settings on your TV and then you select which HDMI it is, one, two, or three. Now, one quick thing I do want to point out here. When you are purchasing HDMI cables, and we could go really, really detailed and long into the cables. Again, I want to keep the video short here, but um, one thing to point out, if you do purchase an HDMI cable, when you go to hook it up, some cables are directional meaning one specific end goes into your receiver device, one specific end goes into your monitor device. You wanna make sure you follow that, and usually it'll list it on the package and let you know it's directional, or it'll have pictures of arrows um, going, you know, in what direction you wanna, uh, or you need to hook it up in. So you always want, from the receiver is always gonna be out to in on your TV. TVs are always gonna be input, because the signal is going into that and that's what shows the picture on the screen. So whatever direction the arrow is pointing, it should be pointing away from the receiver and going into your TV if you get a um, HDMI cable that is directional. You're gonna hook up your speakers right and left. Now, you might be wondering, well, which one is which? It says right, but it's not right from you looking at the back of the receiver. You always want to picture which speaker is which when you're in front of the receiver, looking at the front of it, watching TV, you know, your normal setup. So I would plug this into my right speaker here. For my right speaker input, then when I plug it into the speaker, I'm actually gonna plug it into the right speaker as if I'm sitting on the sofa looking directly at everything. That's the right speaker. You wouldn't wanna plug it on your right side right here, like this is my right hand, and I would plug it into my right speaker over here because when I turn around to watch it, that would actually be backwards.
Now I take the other end of the speaker cable and I plug that into the speaker. Black to black, red to red. Now this specific speaker cable that I'm using is what's called banana, it has what's called banana plugs on it. Why banana plugs? I have no idea. They don't look like bananas, but that's what the name of them are. So you may not be using speaker cable that has a banana plug on it, which is totally fine. Here's what you would do instead. Most speaker terminals like this here, you just unscrew it. And you can see down here, this one is a little bit different, but has a directional hole where you would take your bare speaker wire, stick it in there, and then screw it back down to tighten it. Okay, once you got it all the way tight, then your speaker cable is secure in there. And that'll still give you your sound. You're still gonna wanna make sure you match your, your negative and your positives. But that's how you would connect it if you didn't have um, banana clips on your speaker wire. So there you have it. First video in the video series of home theater for starters. Um, again, I wanted to try to keep the video short. There's a lot of details you can get into on every aspect here, but we're going to go over those in other videos. This way we can keep the videos nice and short, very simple, easy to digest for those of us that are just starting in the home theater world or otherwise known as cinephile. So thanks for joining. Uh, or if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button over there. We'd appreciate the support and we'll see you on the next video.